And uh, today I prepared to show you a game that I played last Wednesday at the US Chess League. I'm playing for the St. Louis uh, team, Archbishops, and currently we are tied for first in the Western Division. And tomorrow we're going to have a big match, week 10, and if we win, we will win the, uh, the division and uh, go to playoffs with the first place. So, thank you. Yeah, it's a very, very important match tomorrow. So if you have time, uh, you can watch. You can come at the club, watch here in person and cheer for the team, or you can just do it at home on ICC. You can support the local team. So uh, this game I'm playing against international master Mark Ginsburg. E4, E6, name of the opening. Yes? French defense, correct. Very good, excellent. French defense now. What are the four options now they can try to do here in French defense? What are the four options you, you know? Tell me all the main four options for white here. Who can do it? First one. Um, you can do the advance with e5. Correct. You can do the exchange when you take. Uh -huh. You can do knight c3 or you can do the parash with knight c2. Knight c3 is called? The classical? Classical. And that's what Mr. Ginsburg is doing. Knight c3 classical. He's playing the classical setup. So, what do you play? I'm playing in this game and trying to create some winning chances here. I didn't want to just try to equalize, so I wanted to play something a little sharper here. So I decided to uh, steer away from my normal play, d takes e4 or knight f6, and play the bishop g4 here. Bishop b4 here. And what's the name of this variation? It's a French defense classical, but now bishop b4 is a different one. What is it called, yeah? The Vinover. 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 Excellent. Yes. So now here, why should play e5? If he doesn't play e5, he cannot fight for advantage. So he has to play e5. It's necessary. Okay. But he didn't do it. Okay. He didn't want to go for the sharp theoretical lines with c5, and takes, takes queen g4, uh, 97, queen, 97, queen g4. This is the way that White should play for advantage. Okay. So, but he didn't do that, my opponent. He decided to play something rare, knight g e7. But when you play rare lines against sharp continuation, then normally you're not going to have an advantage, OK? So now here, what should I try to do here? From here on, I want you to take control and find all the moves that I played when he resigned. This wasn't a very long game, only 31 moves. Or maybe even less, actually. What did I play here? Absolutely. Opponent gives you a pawn in the opening, early stages in the game. You look at it. There is no big reason for you not to take it. So you accept that. Now he goes a3, attacking the bishop. Now bishop is getting challenged here. I have two options, either retreat or capture. What do you think I should do here? I'm playing for a win in this game, remember. I'm playing, trying to play for a win here, trying to play as sharp as possible. So black to play here, decision needed here. Huh? I will keep the bishop. But in that case, he takes your central pawn. Then. Yes, but then he get chased around again, no? Yeah. And then. Then he takes so it's. We're, we don't want to move the bishop too many times like that. That's not going to be very, very good. So what do we do here? Huh? Bishop takes c3, correct decision. He takes knight c3. Don't play f5 here, Danny. Very dangerous, f5. You know, you're behind in development. Playing f5, he will play f3, break the center. And then he will have two sharp pair of bishops, OK? So this, this could actually turn out to be very dangerous for you. Look at this. This guy comes in, bishop comes in, castle. Very sharp. You're behind in development. Too risky. Play it safe. But again, you have to put pressure, OK? Now, what's the move here? We got to try to get development, OK? We got to catch up on development here. How? Knight f3. 
No, no. You're playing oh, for black. F6, F6, sorry. Knight F6, you're going to get pinned. Bishop G5. <laughs> That's going to be temporarily, okay? Temporarily. You got to do something better than that. You don't want to get pinned, okay? So what is my idea here? To try to put pressure here, to try to play for advantage. Not easy, but I had to do this. Otherwise, I will just have an equal game, and it's not going to be not easy. Going to be to try to get winning chances against a you know strong international master. Yes. Excellent. Good job. Knight c6. Excellent thinking. Developing a knight and immediately questioning his pawn. What is he going to do? He's got two options, but if he goes bishop d, then it's passive. Then we can try to consider even playing knight f6 because then he cannot play the bishop away. So, bishop b5. That's what he played. Don't rush. Thinking, thinking. This is a very important game. You cannot rush. Bishop d7. He takes your pawn. Knight d4. And then it's not so clear. You know, you ha still have to follow the rules, guys. Development, right? Remember, he's trying to take your knight and damage your structure. Are you going to let him do that? 97, and if he can't take the knight because of the support. Denny, excellent thinking, yes. Knight g7. If he takes, you take back with the knight, okay? Excellent. Just simple development. Here he made a mistake. And looks like this was his chance to take the pawn. He didn't do it. I think he didn't do this because he, he didn't like the fact that I will castle and then his pawn is hanging. And it's not so clear what is he going to do now. Because it's like, if he goes here, I even have like queen d5, which would be ki kind of unpleasant. Everything is hanging and this g2 is weak, okay? So anyway, uh, he should have done this, he didn't do it. I also have a Maybe a good position after a6, questioning the bishop. Bishop goes here, I go b5, and then I take the d4 pawn. Uh, if he takes here, knight takes, then take this guy. Okay? All right. So, my opponent played, uh, sorry, castles. Now, now what are you going to do? He just castled. You still cannot take pa take the pawn on d4 because you're, uh, you know, you're pinned. Castle, just castle. Keep it safe. Remember, that's your step number three. Castle. Keep it safe now. Now you want to take this pawn already. See, he had the chance. He had an opportunity to take, but he didn't take it. And now he's not going to have a chance anymore because he has to go bishop e3. Okay. Because bishop is now strong move needed here. Strong move needed here. Five now. Excellent. F5 protecting the knight and now threatening to play f4 in some point. Excellent. This is the moment to do it. See, I had to get development before I think about protecting the pawn. Don't be Thinking, oh, be greedy a little bit. Oh, I want a pawn, I gotta protect it no matter what. See, I was ready to give it back to him to catch up on development. And he should have taken that pawn because now he's never gonna get that pawn back. Because now I'm gonna try to hang on to that pawn as much as possible. If he plays f3, what's the strong continuation now? f4, perfect. Attacking the bishop, he moves away. Look at that. Look at that protected pass pawn, only three now. Next move, we're picking up the pawn on d4 as well. So, I think right around here, you realize that things went wrong. So he goes 92. I'm better, but still, if you don't play precisely, it's not going to be easy to win a position like this, because don't forget, he has a small compensation because he still has the pair of the bishops. Now, I would like you to establish the grip, you know, the control for your knight on d5 here. How are you going to establish that outpost for your knight here? What do you need to do first to do that? Well, possible eight days to play 6 takes 
case you know that great if he does he'll play b5 and then you'll be controlling the c4 square so that he cannot very good thinking a6 if he takes i'll be gladly taking him back and he doesn't have the two bishops anymore so he goes bishop to a4 and now push it now he goes here and now what are you gonna do outpost posted there right that's an outpost that he cannot move you from the pawn anymore right very strong now he plays c4 attacking your knight i take he takes and now what are you gonna do from now on Uh, that's an interesting computer suggestion, actually. Uh, I'm not sure if it's better than what I did, but that computer suggested this also. Bishop a2. And then knight c4. That's, that's mm. there. I can completely control c4. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, but I don't want to keep moving the knight that much. I just want to... Knight c4 is a possibility. Yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah, white is, black is better. Yeah, bishop. bishop here. It's yeah. an idea. Yeah, so I just put this guy here first. When you put a knight on a square like this, this cannot be a bad move. Okay? It cannot be a bad move when you cement a knight like that in the middle of the board. Okay, remember that. Just. So he played c4, took, bishop takes, and now what to do? Who is going to, I don't want to give you hints now, because if I give you hints, it makes it much easier now. Now, from here on, I want you to play like a grandmaster for the rest of the game. Very precisely, okay? Let's see. Let's think a little bit, yeah? Let's think a little bit. What is the correct move here? Look at the position. Try to see which piece could be improved here, huh? Which piece you can improve a little bit. And you know, he wants to go rook c1, he wants to put pressure on that c file as well. So he's trying to do things there. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Sure. A5. A5. A little bit loosen, huh? A little bit loosening. Rook C1. Got a C5, six knight hanging a little bit. Could be a little bit loosening, think. Uh, rook B8. You have an unprotected piece here. And that unprotected piece can be improved here. Knight on the rim is dim. dim, lonely and dim, right? Don't put a knight on the rim because it's going to get dim. So better. Bravo, bravo, correct decision. Look at this. When you have knights, they want to be like this, protecting each other, okay? Because when they're doing this, they're very, very strong. If a capture occurs, you go knight d5, centralizing the pieces. Knights, they like to be like this, protecting each other. Now, he goes queen d2. Now, another good move needed here. I believe you need to catch up on your development a little bit. And here, the good thing, the beauty of it, you make a move and you're threatening something. That means he has to react. That gives you additional time to develop your more pieces. So what is the move that is going to develop and threaten something? Develop and threaten something. How about we increase the threat level? And we make a real threat now. Developing move and threatening something, yes? How about a queen to uh, d6? Bravo again. Very strong. Queen d6. Developing and threatening to play f4. Trapping that bishop. What do you think of that idea? To trap it. Now. If he plays knight f4, which looks very tempting, who can tell me why is this move a blunder? Why is this move losing, huh? Absolutely, Danny. Correct. Attacking the knight. 
Knight moves away, f4, winning the bishop. And if he takes, how are you going to capture? Wait, wait there? E pawn, e pawn, attacking the bishop. Yeah. If bishop takes on g5, we take it, see? Tempos. Remember? Chess, it's all about tempos. He moves away the bishop, then, thank you for the bishop. You see how that works? When you put your pieces on a good squares, good things are going to happen to you. So it's all about putting your pieces on good squares. So now he's forced to play the g3 move. I know he doesn't want to play this, but he's forced to. Now, back to your idea. That was good. Now find a better version of that move now. Your idea, bishop d7, bishop b5 was good. But now find a better and more active version of it. We want to get rid of the bishops, right? French defense. What's the biggest problem in a French defense? Who knows that? When you have a chance, what do you do? Excellent. Better version of that. Better, better version of that. Better version you have of that. Okay. Now that his light squares are weak next to the king, can we try to get a bishop there? Some kind of bishop d seventy eight to h five. Something. You have a point. You have a point. A bit too long, but you have a <laughs> point. Yes. A bit too long. Something better. I'd rather see those bishops coming off the board, because then I will capitalize on the weaknesses of the light squares. How are we going to do that? That's, that was suggested already. Yeah, that was already suggested, but better. Same idea, but better version of it. OK? Same idea, but a better, but I want better version from you. Opponent has two bishops. When opponent has advantage of two bishops, you want to exchange one. Get rid of one, OK? That's what you want to do. So knight takes e3 right away. Why do you want to take that bishop? That bishop is stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> You have a superior knight on d5. Let's do that later, when we have completed the development, OK? You, you can take that. That bishop is not going anywhere. I mean, he, this is a you know, very good piece. So don't worry about that bishop right now. Let's try to get our development. Somebody even suggested this move earlier. Oh, a5. Of course. But. <laughs> Now it's time for e5, OK? Now it's time for e5. Excellent. Bravo. Excellent thinking. The point of this move is? Of course. Now, my opponent went here. Now I go bishop a6, b3. Now, this is a really tough moment here. This is a challenge, OK? Challenge. Think now. Because now, when you have the knights like this, uh, beautifully protecting each other, sometimes they are not as effective because one is taking the space of the other one. And the one behind it is kind of crumbled up, just, just defending, OK? So now, which idea comes into place? Which idea now comes into place? No, no. Did you listen to the question? We're talking about knights. Knights are stepping on each other's squares, OK? Which idea now comes into play? Finally! <laughs> Hi, finally! Yes, this is the moment you do it, OK? This is called proper chess. What if, they, what if instead of b3, they put their bishop back on a2? Then how do I trade the bishop? Look at the, super, look at the superior bishop you have here. Su nice. Superior, you know? Rook, you can go a4, rook b8, double up to rooks. I mean, it plays by itself, this position. You know, <laughs> just go here. You go here, double up the rooks. I mean, it's not difficult. You just double up. Beautiful bishop you have now. Plant the bishop here if you want to. OK? So b3, now we take. If it takes with the queen, then you go knight d5, gaining additional tempos. If it takes, pawn takes back. I'm doubling those double pawns, OK? 
So he took back with this. Now, important sequence here. Think. Now, you want to put some pressure on that B file, right? Put some pressure on the B file now. Which rook, I'm sorry? What is the rook doing here? Action is where now? Action is focused where? Action is focused on which side of the board now? Absolutely. Look at that. Action is here. We're not thinking about attack right now. We're talking about, you know, getting the advantage here, positional advantage there. Okay? Now he goes knight f4, and now what are you going to do? He's threatening to take your pawn here. He cannot take with the rook because his pawn is weak here. So he has to take back with the pawn. And if he takes back with the pawn, what do we do? <coughs> that beef. Absolutely, but then this pawn is always hanging, you know? Queen is attacking directly. And I want to secure a square, you know? I want to secure a strong square for my outpost, for my rook here. So the move is? Absolutely, a4, yes. Ready to go rook b3. Now he goes rook c3. I bet he didn't expect me to play this move here. I bet you he didn't think of this move. He thought he's getting some kind of control, maybe. But now strong move comes in here. Danny, look at my rooks. Where, what side of the board do you think we should play here? Pawn g5, e5, you're shifting the action to other side of the board. I think we have to focus where we are strong right now, right? We're building up here, right? And what was the purpose of the move a4? To secure which square? Right, so, so work up to uh, b3. Absolutely. And remember, when you were ahead, you're never afraid to trade. And I have an extra pawn, right? Extra pawn. You are ahead. You're never afraid to trade. Now he takes, because I will double up. Queen b2, attacking my pawn. Rook b8, rook c1. This is a tough move to find. Because it looks like suddenly now my b3 pawn might be a little bit weak, and he's going to go rook c3 and put pressure on this. But here I spent some time. I went deep into thoughts here and came up with a strong continuation. I have a strong asset now, on top of having the extra pawn, strong asset is the b3 pawn here. So what can you do here? But where? That's a logical thinking. That is a very logical thinking, but where? where? Excellent thinking. Knight c6, but then he plays. He didn't play this move, but do you have a solution for this? Knight on the rim. Yeah. It's not ideal, yeah? Yes, I'm better after knight f5. I agree. I am better. I agree with you, but. If I had a chance to play this move, it would have been really even more spectacular game. Rather, rather than positionally. Knight takes. Correct. Look at that. Now threatening to check here, so he has to take. Check. Now he goes here now. Don't rush here. One inaccurate move and you're not winning this game. One inaccuracy. Yes? Um, queen takes rook followed by pawn to b2. One inaccuracy, and you're not winning this game. <laughs> <laughs> you think, why did I say that? Uh, okay, yeah. One, huh? One inaccuracy, and you blew away the win. All right, go back to that. 
You have to remember that, okay? That's why. Don't lose the winning position here, okay? This is winning for you, but you need to find a neat move here. You have a pass pawn, what do you do with it? Push it. Push it. Pass pawns are meant to be pushed. Now he goes here. Check out. And now what's the winning move? Push up. Push up. And going in, okay? Excellent. Yeah, no, it's still winning. G5, F4 is winning too. So this is crushing. Uh, and if he goes here, this is funny. I just go push here. And let's say he attacks me. I push again. I did all this to, so just to get his knight from here to there. So then I can do whose idea? Yeah, your idea. And we push. And we push. See, the knight is now ineffective. Ineffective, OK? And then you queen. Excellent. Well, that didn't happen, unfortunately. <laughs> Very unfortunately, that didn't happen, because I was looking forward to that tactical sequence. So he played c5, attacking my queen. You still have to be precise here. It's not over yet. Now, where do you go with the queen? Where do you go with the queen here, huh? Well, guys, you don't need to think too hard on this one. It's pretty obvious, the next move. What is it? <laughs> okay, I guess not so obvious. Your e6 pawn is weak, so you can't just uh, go away from it. So. Danny, very good. Now, if he goes around Rook City, then who, what are we going to do? Absolutely, same idea is back. We're back in action with this. So, he goes here now. Takes away the a5 square from the knight. And now he wants to get active with, you know, Rook Queen c4, Rook b1. He wants to put some pressure on me, you know? Now, what are you going to do? You gotta find this move. Then his next two moves were very important to win the game, okay? Because it, and also win effectively, you know, without dragging the game, you know, to several moves unnecessarily. Yes? I have a possible idea. Um, I would like to get my knight to g5. I'm thinking maybe I want to play g5 first to get his knight away from my pawn, then play knight to seven, knight to five. Or maybe knight to seven right away. Knight to seven. Absolutely, right away. Now you're aiming to go here. Now he played queen c4 in expectation that I have to defend this or play knight d5, then he takes. He, that's what he was hoping for, okay? Or king f7, I go defend. But now, move that he probably didn't expect. Move that is very powerful and will give me the winning position now. After this move, we can call it winning for black. But you must calculate. You can't just play this move. You have to have some calculations. Did you calculate everything, Denny? Yeah, the queen d5. Bravo. Wow. Very, very strong calculation. What, what if you took the queen instead? It's, it's even, even, even simpler. OK, let's finish this line. Then we'll go over that. Then takes, right? Yeah. Takes. Bravo, bravo. Look at that, see? The b-pawn queen. So he took back with the knight. Uh, queen takes was asked. Now we take, take. And now what do we do? And then you go b2, knight c3. And 
victory is assured. Got it? Excellent. So after this, my opponent went here. Now, you're three moves away from victory. Here is Lyon in a position that he was completely hopeless. I mean, he, he could have played a few more moves, but he just realized it's just lost. So what's the idea here? Bravo. Put it out, post attack it. Now, keep going, keep working. Or so that they can't take the pawn because of the double attack on e3? That's a not thought, but you have something simpler than that. So, what is this pawn sitting there here for? Well, you can push it first. Pass pawns meant to be pushed. Yeah. That's one. Now, what are you going to do? Now, queen b5. And he resigned. Because if he takes. I take, sorry, he pushes, you don't go back, Denny, you go in, now he pushes, thank you, you go here, he pushes here, cover, and you take this. Any questions about this game? Excellent, now we're going to do the over review of the game. And we're going to see how well the students here remember this, OK? Everybody should be participating. So I will, uh, I will call you on this, OK? OK, we are ready to start. And uh, it's a pretty, sim pretty clear game, I think. So you should remember it. So we're going to start from here. You play the black moves. Which opening is this, everyone? French defense. Which line is he playing? The classical. classical. Which response did I play? Bishop B4. What is it called? The name of this line that Black chooses? Vinover. 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 Yes. Very good. That's fine. We got it. We got it. Back to you. Knight G2. He didn't play the main line. Took the pawn. A3, what do you do? Pa pass? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, back to you. <laughs> I know. Still, you can choose. <laughs> you can answer. <laughs> you can't uh, defend your pawn yet. Yeah. Bishop b5. Continue. <laughs> now, he wants to take your knight and damage your pawn structure. Are you going to let him do that? No. Then? <laughs> <laughs> then what are you going to do? Um. To avoid that. Knight? Yeah. Knight? Go where? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Excellent hint, yes. <laughs> castles. He should have taken. He castles. Now, what are we going to do? Now, castle. It's on you. Okay. He castled. Bishop e3. Now you play the f5. Now he played knight e2. And now you want to establish that outpost, remember? How? Now. Continue. It's him, but he's, uh, he's 
Put the night. Uh, where? Um, night. D5. D5. Excellent. Yes. C4. We take. He takes. Now, next. Cement the knights. Remember the knights, they like to protect each other. Excellent. Now he goes here. Developing move and threatening move. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Remember? You say this move. You forgot? You, you suggested this move. <laughs> What's the move here? Develop and threaten. Develop and threaten. F5? F4? Yes. Queen D6, remember? You say that. Yeah. Excellent. G3. Now, back to you, Denny. Biggest problem in the French defense. When you have a chance, what do you do? Get rid of it. Bishop pays six. He played b3, and now? Remember, when the knights are sitting on each other now, what are you supposed to do? Very nice thinking. And now, the next one is we got to get our rook into the game. Rook on f8, right? Rook f8. B8. Excellent. Knight f4. Next. Um, bishop takes, bishop takes and then a4. Very good thinking. Now, when you play a4, what do you do? What was the purpose of it? Move your rook up. Now, he's threatening to go rook c. Now you got to get your knight in. Denny, knight wants to be a participant. Excellent. Why is doing this? I wonder. Okay. That's, I, no one Some glitch, yeah? Okay, c5, attacking the queen now. Where is the queen belong? Oh, uh, g7. Excellent. Rook c3, and now knight d4 again. So he didn't do that, he played queen c3, and now we have to maneuver it back, the knight. Very good memory, yes. Knight e7, very nice. Queen c4, and now the tricky moment here, where he attacked on me, thinking I'm going to crumble up and defend. But instead, I calculated deeper and tried to push him back immediately, because the knight on e4 is the piece that is holding his position together. What is the move here? G5. Bravo. G5. If he takes, if he takes, B2, knight c3 wins. If knight e6, then this was a hard move to find, queen d5. Because this was forcing the liquidation. He takes, knight takes. Okay. So he goes knight to e2. Now, knight belongs where? The knight on e7 belongs on d5. Excellent. King f2. And now, push the pawn. And queen b5 forces a resignation. He resigned because if he takes, I take. He goes here, rook b3. See, when you have position is dominating, then you're in time. Excellent job, everyone. Excellent job. Very good thinking, OK? At the end of the lecture, I'll have one special study for you to solve. Not very difficult. OK, this is by uh, Troitsky, OK? Troitsky study, OK, for you. I promise it's not very hard, <laughs> like some of the other ones. <laughs> I did? Sorry. White to play and win. I tell you this, if the f pawn wasn't there for black, he could make a draw easily. If he can somehow get his bishop in without ma getting mated, this is a draw. But you have to choose this, use this opportunity here, OK, to find a way to win him. So, very special play needed here. 
and you have to remember that maneuvering your knight, okay? Maneuverability of your knight is important here. Try to suggest the whole thing when you raise your hand, not just the first few moves. Denny? Uh, king h6, king h8, knight h4. Excellent. The See, the point is he cannot go here because of the mate. Yeah. So it has to go here. Now. Correct thinking, yes. Correct thinking. He can't go here, still mates. He goes here and now, you just got to control that g8 square, okay, with um, something. Um, yes? What, you mean at h8? Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Just move the knight uh, up. Just like knight or no. Two places Wait. in the door. C6 or D7, which one? Either one works. Either one works. Let's assume we go here, okay? Assume. He cannot go away, we take the bishop. He goes here now. Take away this square now, immediately. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. King cannot go anywhere. He goes here, and what do we call this? Checkmate. <laughs> okay. You could have, you could have also done it this way, by the way. And knight f8. This way, you have a mate as well here. Got it? Yeah. Very special idea, starting with king h6 here. It's mate. So he has to go king g8, knight f3, maneuver the knight, and knight c6 or knight d7. Both wins leads to a mate. Or you can start with knight d7 here and mate. Okay, very good everyone. Thank you for attending the class tonight and to look forward to seeing you all on Thursday evening. <laughs>